Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be working on a couple of things here. So I didn't have a stream yesterday because I watched the Leaf game, and uh, that seemed to be a giant colossal mistake, and I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, I'm gonna keep the Leaf game on the other window here as I work away, so that I can uh, I can still watch the game. Uh, while interacting with you guys, uh, which I think will uh, will be good until I start swearing like a trucker uh, when they start losing. So uh, I did some major work on the uh, on the basement uh, at the uh, the end of the last video, and then uh, into uh, the evening be uh, beyond that when I didn't stream. Hey, hey what's up? Um, and so one of the things that I did, uh, was to, uh, uh, start propagating my LODs on everything. Um, and so every mesh in my world, <sighs> excuse me, I'm exhausted here. One of my, uh, every mesh in my world now still, uh, has LODs, um, which was beautiful. I was able to get a, uh, a very big boost in performance from doing this, um, which is good. I do have to watch out uh, while I'm doing performance. There's a couple of things I need to be mindful of. First of which is that I'm running a 4K monitor. And so while I'm doing these tests in-game here, I'm actually running it at 4K. And uh, that is likely uh, not to be the resolution that other people use when they, uh, when they, when they play the system. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to jump into the Cabin in the Woods map here. Um, there we are. Uh, and I've, I've encountered a couple of errors. I let the kids uh, play this. And uh, I ended up finding a couple of little mistakes. Or not mistakes, just issues that I think could be corrected. Um, I'm going to bring a uh, blocking volume into the world here. Um... So the one thing that my kids were desperate to do was get upstairs, uh, up here. They're really, really, really trying to get up there. And my, my daughter actually managed to get a, uh, a good chunk of the way there. And so I'm going to put a, uh, a blocking volume in here, uh, just to, uh, prevent that from happening. I was just going to live at the bottom of the stairs and going to kind of coincide uh, with the bottom of where this thing is here, just so that there's no uh, possibility of going, like even just rim going up the the side of the uh, the stairs here, um, because I've got this little bit of overlap. So the blocking volume here actually encompasses the entire staircase. So no way anybody's getting past that. Uh, and then here too, uh, I'm I'm not pleased with the uh, the fact that this issue happens um how did this go into nowhere near the right space So I'm just going to go place this in here, uh, switch this, um, uh, this way. And again, I want, I want to make sure that this is not just a, uh, I'm gonna bring this into the ground a little bit. That should be enough. I'm going to scale it just a little bit more. Just like that. Just so you can't actually... This uh, this bench being upside down, you could walk up it. Um, and so I don't want that to happen. And then the other place where I was encountering uh, some collision issues was here uh, with this. So because this guy is offset, uh, you can step up on it here and then step up onto this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this so that there's no edge 
upon which a player can be standing. Okay, um, and then there was a issue with these pipes here. Um, these pipes don't have collision, and again, uh, instead of just going and turning the collision on with them, which is going to be fairly expensive, they're cylinders, and I can probably build something uh, collision-wise that would mimic that, uh, but it'll actually just be easier if I just throw a blocking volume in here. So I think that should work. Uh, there was a little bit here too. So what I might do is just move this out and elongate it a little bit. Just like that. I just want to make sure that the... Uh, there we go. Okay. So that should work there. Uh, I don't think I really encountered much else in terms of issues. Um, I am going to just, as a form of uh, safety precautions here, block off the stairs too. And so I'll just put this in here. We're gonna scale this one down a little bit. And again, that's just to prevent players from trying to get into places where they, they needn't be. Okay. Uh, I need another mesh that I want to create uh, to place in here to start filling up a little bit more. Again, I've got a bunch of empty shelves here in the middle that uh, I really would like to uh, to fill up a little bit more. Maybe what I'll do is I'll throw in a few of my cardboard boxes in here. And I'll scale this guy up so that he kind of takes up a lot of room in here. And then I'll just... Let's put a couple up here. So I did, the only reason I really want to get this kind of taken care of is that I'm very much nearing the end of what I want to be doing with this thing. Uh, let's go and scale this guy down just a little bit. So it looks a little different. And... I'm going to move this guy down a shelf. I'll put another box here. And let's grab a couple more bins. I'll rotate this one. So that's better. It's a little fuller in there on that side. I've got another really empty shelf here that can use a few of these things. So again, I'll just kind of place a couple of things out there to just kind of fill up the shelves a little bit. I still have, again, I still have a few totems to place as well. So I don't, I don't necessarily need this to be crazy full. But uh, it'll be nice to get a few of these things kind of placed here. Um, so I wouldn't mind trying to find another mesh that I could make um, fairly low res, if possible. 
Um, you know, I like I like the uh, I like the bin because it's only a couple hundred polys, and the box is just about a thousand or so. So it's it's a fairly um, quick and easy way to fill up a lot of space um, with these meshes. And so if I can kind of come up with something else in that vein, um, where it's it's not going to be uber expensive to throw a bunch of these things into the map, um, that would probably be really good. Um, because again, it adds to that clutter. It adds to that sense of, uh, of just like a lot of crap in here, a lot of stuff going on. Um, I think I might try and make, I don't know, a canoe. I think a canoe might fit really well in here if it was like across the top or something like just on on a bunch of these shelves maybe even uh oh there's a cross member in there i was gonna say put it across there uh, but it just it seems like one of those things that would occupy a lot of room if i could get it in here um and and again kind of make things feel cluttered maybe a kayak or a canoe or something um it's one of those things that again you might you might see in a in a cluttered old, old basement um, Ian gave me, uh, the idea yesterday, um, or the day before, of throwing some, uh, throwing some sheets on top of furniture in order to, uh, create kind of more unique assets, um, which is not a, not a bad idea. Um, I think another thing that I could reproduce fairly easily is this coat rack. I'm going to make a coat rack over here. And we'll, uh, I, I lost it. There it is. It's not too bad. Maybe we'll put it, well, why did you go down? So we got dealt a little bit of bad news, uh, today. Uh, actually, just minutes before I started streaming on, um, On Monday, my kids are going to be eight years old, and uh, they are going to be having a birthday in um, a birthday in uh, isolation, which is no doubt not an easy thing uh, for a kid to experience. Uh, not having a birthday party, not being able to see their friends, not being able to have the day blown out as big as uh, as big as they they would normally. And so, uh, my wife and I have been um, thinking of ways to uh, make the day a little bit more special. I just realized that I've got a bunch of work stuff open that you guys are not able to see. So, I'm going to do something here like that. You can't see my stream anymore for the time being. So that I can close the uh, the files that I was working on without... without having you guys see some work stuff that shouldn't be seen. I think that should do it. We'll close that all together. Uh, where's this folder going? Okay. What the hell, man? Turn those both off. There we go. Okay. Apologies. Uh, that was just, uh, uh, work that shouldn't, shouldn't have been there. Hey, Rich, how you doing, brother? Uh, okay, so I wanted to make a, uh, a wall shelf. Um, I want to just go take a look here inside my project and see what I've got in terms of, uh, of boards that I can use. So I do have these boards from the hutch, which are textured and lovely. Uh, and I do have another one here, this one. So I have two of these things, which are already textured. Um, so it occurred to me that if I were to make a, um, that's the top of it. Uh, if I were to actually just make a bracket, uh, upon which these things could sit, uh, I can make a wall shelf really inexpensive. Um, and so I think that's what I'm going to do is, uh, is make a uh, a wall shelf. So let's see here, wall shelf bracket. 
these things are typically kind of made out of metal. Uh, it'll it'll be very inexpensive to make this. Um, I want it to look a little. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So I just kind of went and looked at a bunch uh, of wall brackets online, and it's actually this uh, format that I want to make. I like that triangular shape and whatnot. It looks kind of old school. Um, and I'll put some screws in here so I don't have to do transparency. And then what I can do is I can actually just sit that board right on top of it, and it'll give me the uh, the effect that I'm I'm going for. Uh, it'll give me that uh, that quite easily made shelf type thing. So that's what I'm going to work on right now. Uh, one of the other things that I want to do, and I'm kind of just mulling this around in the back of my head here. Well, I do have someone plugging away in a rig for me for the kid. Um, I thought about doing some procedural animation inside of the engine. Um, in terms of uh, helping to both find and identify the totems in the world a little bit better. And so I have an idea. I have an idea that I want to do in regards to that, uh, which I'll tackle as soon as I make these uh, make these shelves and go and clutter the basement a little bit more. Uh, okay. So to make this thing, uh, I'm going to start with a box, and I'll just make it at the origin here. Maybe something about that big. Uh, and then I'm going to play around with the scale. So I want this thing to be about ooh, let's call it 30 centimeters. Um. And then I want the width to be, I don't know, maybe 12 centimeters. Uh, 12 is too much. Eight. Eight. Eight's better. Uh, I'll convert this to an edible poly. And I actually really only need... Um, just this face. I could have done this out of a plane. Um... So I'm going to do this. Let's go to my front view here again. I'm not doing this in the front view. I'm doing this in the side view. Uh, let's go and uh, drop this down. I made this thing, I think it was 30 in height. So I'm going to go uh, 0 and 30 just to move it down here. Uh, I want to do this so that I have a, a decent point. So when I put the shelf, the, the shelf board on top of this, if I have the position of this thing set to the top of where the board goes, um, it'll be a little bit easier to uh, to place it. And so that's why I'm doing that. Uh, I'm going to scale this in. I'm going to... Uh, let's go and chamfer those. And I'm just going to try and make all three of these edges the same size and chamfer them again to make this about round, like so. And then we'll just connect through. No, don't duplicate. Don't do anything like that. I really should put a uh, another custom shortcut on Control V uh, because I I hit that inadvertently a lot, and um, and it's uh, it's it's always a pain in the butt. It's never what I want to be doing. I think it's one of those things that I could probably put something there that would be more useful than nothing. Uh, okay, so the next thing that I want to do is hit all these polygons and inset them. And it's actually just the bottom curve that I'm looking for here. I want to get that to be about the right size, like so. I'm going to delete this. Let's move these back up to zero. Let's go and grab the Y position of this. And paste this one there so that it becomes a straight line. And come to think of it, this one can go to the same place without the negative. And we should... Oh, that did not go straight. So we're going to have to straighten our... I didn't put this where it should be. That's the issue. It's not. It's not what I thought it was. Um, so let's fix that. It was not centered. Uh, which is an issue. Issue. Bring these up too. Okay. Um, it's a little bit better. Um, hmm. 
Okay, back to the shape. That thing's going to come out. I feel like those edges are misplaced. I'm going to... Ooh, I did not do it. I'll just run the same spacing down here. That'll look a little bit better. Uh, okay, so I'm going to bevel this out or extrude it out here. Extrude. No. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey now. Now that you don't even have the right gods. So I just want to pull this out a little bit. And then we're going to chamfer this segment that's going to go all the way around. My chamfer is going to break down here. I'm fully aware of that, and it is unavoidable at the moment. But it's uh, it's one of those things that happens when I use this topological layout. Um, you always end up with this kind of weird screwball-y break when you do this. Let's try the quad. It's not any better. Actually, it is a little better. Let's see if I can't. Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm going to see if I can't just manually clean this up. Get something a little bit more usable out of this here. So we're going to begin by scaling. Those actually have to go on the other side of one another, which is not something I can do with scaling. Bring this one in. That one's going to come in as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and put a minus beside that number. What? Like so. Then, I'll remove the minus from this side, and put a minus in on this side, to flip these things over the right way. That way scaling will work. Let's kill that one. Oh, I went back the other side. Um, okay, so here's what I'll do. I'm just going to move this one a little bit. And we'll go back here and copy this number. Uh, followed by putting the negative in. Then I can go here and just paste that number back in. Voila. There's just something out of whack here. Uh, let's go and begin by moving these guys up. These guys can now get scaled in and brought down. And there, now we're starting to get somewhere. So anyway, in trying to make uh, Monday, uh, my kid's birthday, as special as possible for them in, uh, in quarantine, the, uh, the wife and I, ordered a um a wet bouncy castle which is like a uh like a regular bouncy castle but they plug water into it and it becomes like a water slide slash bouncy castle that we were going to have in the backyard all day and so the kids were just going to be able to go mental all day back there by themselves and uh we got this months ago that we booked this and they just contacted us. Shit you not. They just contacted us this evening. And said they weren't going to be able to make it. And it's like, that, that was your whole business. It was costing us 500 bucks to rent this goddamn thing. And you cancel with not enough time for us to get a replacement. And so, yeah, my, uh, my wife is pretty heartbroken. Uh, 
not not so much. I mean, it's it's disappointing to have the bouncy castle gone, obviously, but um, but it's just been it's been one thing after another with trying to trying to give the kids, you know, why does that go? We're not going anywhere. I can't remove that. What the shit? Okay, I can delete it. Ah, oh, you bastard. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been kind of one thing after another with, you know, trying to make... Trying to make summer fun for kids and, you know, it just seems like everything is completely falling apart and my poor children are the ones paying the uh paying the price and i mean obviously you know there's sh there's a lot of shit wrong in the world and um you know this is this is killing people in in you know in places and whatnot and my kids getting a bouncy castle is you know nowhere near uh as relevant or as important as as that but um just knowing that it was something that they were so uh that we were we didn't tell the kids so they they don't even know that it's not coming um it was just one of those things that you know would have it would have made what was probably going to be a very um disappointing birthday on in the grand scheme of things um, into a very memorable birthday of like, you remember that year we got a bouncy castle all day to ourselves? <sighs> no, yeah, now there ain't nothing. And so I feel bad for my poor kids. I mean, they again, they don't know they're missing out on this, but uh, it just would have been it would have been something to be able to give that to them. And uh, I'm disappointed that it's not. But it's not actually going to happen now. Why is this? There we go. This is all right. I don't know why it's acting so bizarre. Again. Uh, what else have we got in here? Something's wrong with my chamfer. Edge bias. That does nothing. Radial bias does nothing. Open chamfer, inverted, smooth, smooth threshold. Yeah, I don't know why these vertices are tipping in like this. Uh, let's try adding another segment to this. Good enough. I can, I can work with that. I can work with that. And so, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed that this thing that I want to do for my kids is going to fall through. And um, the wife was like, "Well, maybe we'll find one in town." I was like, "You're not gonna, you're not gonna on a Friday night be able to rent a bouncy castle for friggin' Monday, uh, let alone one in Orangeville." And so, yeah, man, it's shitty. I'm done with this. I am done. I am completely done. Oh no, what do you mean you got ditched? How did they ditch you? What, they're just like not including you in the group anymore? Cause that's not cool. I didn't think they were capable of doing that or able to do that. Okay, let's turn this off and I need the X and Z. There's the X. Do that, that works. Negative two fifty one.
That's too bad, Rich. Sorry to hear about that, my friend. Shitty day all around, I suppose. Okay, I think that's going to work. It's got enough. All I'm going to do is just um, add a little bit more thickness to it uh, and close it off. I don't want any open, uh, open faces. Oh, uh, that's too bad, dude. I'm sorry to hear about it. Uh, are you still able to get into another another group? Is that still something that can happen? I'm not... Uh, while I do work there, I'm not actually familiar with the Capstone Project because I don't... Uh, I'm not part of that side of things. I have my little two-year class or second-year class, and that's all I... That's all I end up doing. That's too bad, my friend. I am uh, I am sorry to hear about your your position. That doesn't sound uh, doesn't sound enjoyable. Is it, uh, Rich, is that something you can do on your own? And I know it's more work to do it on your own, but is the capstone something that has to be group work, or can you, can you go that alone? Well, maybe that's your maybe that's your answer. Just go it alone. Okay, that's good. Mm, that's going to move back. That's too bad, man. Sucks to be placed in that kind of position. He 
Yeah, I, yeah, I guess that side of things is bad too. I don't know. I've I've always been uh, one of those guys. So when I was in school, um, we were a group of three that worked on our final project, uh, our capstone, and it was it wasn't because we wanted a group of three. It wasn't because we couldn't find any more members. It was because we refused to work with anybody else in the class. We told the instructors that um, everybody else is an idiot. And to be honest, I'm not going to work with them. Uh, and the instructors were like, if you guys think you can do it on your own without the help of anybody else, be our guest. Let's see what you end up with. Uh, and not only were we able to do that, but we were the only ones who actually ended up with a, a full working game at the end of it. Um, and so, well, I can, I can sympathize. Uh, I also think it's not the end of the world to work alone. Uh, and, and, and I mean, too, like, you know, how are you alone for the capstone project as an interviewer? Um, you know, uh, there was no one that I felt was at my level. Uh, and so I'd prefer to work alone than work with someone who's going to be destructive to work on a team that is going to fall apart. Uh, it, that, you know, <laughs> can always backfire too. Um, but that might be one of those ways around it. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, that's going to be a little bit easier to work with. <sighs> Christian, you don't give yourself enough credit, my friend. You are a very talented 3D modeler. The only thing that really lacks, uh, that is lacking in, in you, is confidence. I mean, hell, you took 3D modeling before you were even in any of my classes. There have been far less talented people than you. 20 low poly assets in seven days. That is completely doable. Need more paint, more, uh, Well, it's it's not enough for me to say it, Christian. It's that you have to you have to realize it, because you constantly saying you're not ready is never going to get you a gig in the industry. You know, you've got to have that that faith in yourself. And again, you're not you're not a bad 3D modeler. You know you know this stuff really really well. It's just a matter of you know getting there. Hey hey, how are you? Welcome to the stream. I'm just trying to get these UVs to play nicely here. Let's I actually might have done it. Let's 
something funny at this end. Well, that just exploded. Okay, what the hell is happening here? So I found on occasion uh, while doing UVs that uh, every now and then I end up with a mesh that implodes when you relax it, where the UVs just go mental. And, uh, and like these ones should be fairly straightforward. It should actually just be all tube like, like this. That looks like it might have fixed it. Um, I'm gonna split this thing along here too. I don't like this big void. Well, son of a bitch, man, that's not working either. That's the way to do it somewhere. Play by your own rules, my friend. Play by your own rules. Actually, one of my um one of my patrons on my Patreon, uh I was able to set her up with a uh an interview. Um, not long ago, a, um, a former student of mine got herself into a position where she was able to, uh, hire artists and, uh, she came looking at me for people. And so I, uh, I recommended my, uh, one of my patrons, actually I recommended both patrons. One of them didn't want the position though, didn't want to be a modeler. Um, and so, uh, but she did, and so I recommended her for this position, and uh, and she emailed me today, letting me know that um, she got it, and that she's uh, she's uh, gonna start next week, and so next week or something like that. But anyway, she was super super stoked. Hey hey, bunny, how you doing? How you doing? We watched, uh, or I watched, as we, <laughs> I watched uh, while working this uh, afternoon. I always put movies on while I'm working, uh, unless I'm live streaming, obviously. Um, but I put on some, uh, I put on some movies this afternoon while I was working for the studio. And uh, ended up watching uh, Gone Baby Gone, which takes place in Boston. And... Um, and ended up for the rest of the day talking with a little bit of a Boston, a little bit of a Boston tang, the way they talk, the way they talk there with a little with a little bit of their R's missing from their words. And uh, yeah, it was kind of it messed with me, messed with me just a little bit. Goddamn Boston. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. That's gonna be freaking good enough. Uh, all of you guys, no polygons. All of you guys go and pack. Err. Uh, ah. I'm good. I had a little bit of a complaint here earlier about uh, an issue that I'm having with uh, trying to get my kid's birthday to be as special as possible, and it's not working out. The Predator is... Uh, I actually really like that movie. I know it didn't do very well. Um, but I thought it was a really neat take on... on Like, trying to go somewhere different with the franchise. Uh, which I thought was cool. Oh, 
What the hell just happened there? And that's... Okay, let's bring this up here. Convert this to an edible poly. Okay, smoothing groups look good. That's just going to be the little bracket that holds the uh, the shelving up. Um, I'm going to make two of them, but now that I've got UVs, I'm going to spit this one out. So let's go export selected. And let's go and put this projects cabin in the woods and FBX. And this is going to be an FBX as well. I'm going to call this a shelf bracket okay like that um i don't care i don't care i don't fucking care if i name it i hark on all my students name your shit name your shit name your shit this one's called box 01 fuck off um let's do that no i'm uh the only reason i'm not naming this is that uh the it'll inherit the name of the file and uh since i'm only gonna bake uh this way um i don't care what it's called and so the only other thing i want to do is go through here go through here and connect this a whole bunch of these i started watching on um on uh i think it was on netflix i was on a netflix or prime I started watching Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Uh, I thought, hey, I'm doing this fucking thing with all these creatures and whatnot. Uh, that would be a really fun one to watch. Um, Robert De Niro plays the uh, plays the monster. And I was like, that's fucking badass. Uh, and then I watch it. And oh my God, is that a fucking terrible movie? And by the time the monster shows up, I was like, man, I got to turn this shit off. Because holy crap, is that a terrible movie? Um... There is a, uh, so right after the, the scene, the very, very famous scene of it's alive, it's alive. Um, there is a, and I shit you not, it's like five minutes of a completely naked Frankenstein's monster and Frankenstein, who is shirtless, flipping around in oil while he's trying to hold up the monster. And it's just these, like, two naked male bodies in oil rubbing against each other for what felt like an eternity. And I was like, what, what does this have to do with anything? Uh, and I just did not... Uh, I did not understand what, what I was watching anymore. Uh, and I was like, wow, this is, this is not the movie I expected it to be. Yeah, it was not what I signed up for. I wanted more, uh, and I got more, uh. What am I doing? I got all fucking distracted. Uh, FBX. Called this shelf bracket. This doesn't need to be fucking 2K. What am I doing? There's going to be a 512 texture. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is nerf my... Uh, width, height. I need only, need, need only be 256. Okay, so I'm going to bake 512 by 256. It's going to be a really small, really fast bake. Okay, I don't care about none of that. This has to go to eight times. 
Ayo, crank it. Thickness, crank it. And go to town, my friend. So this actually should bake really queen really fast. Beautiful. So the only thing I really want to put on here is just to make it look... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. I was just looking at my textures. I thought they were the wrong dimensions, but no, they look actually quite good. Um, so I just really want this thing to look like uh, like metal, which that fucking looks like metal. Let's do triplanar projection instead of UV projection. Um, UV projection is going to be broken on anything that I do here because I'm not square, and so UV projection is always going to compress. Um, good enough. Fuck, all that done. That's four textures. Uh, projects. What the fuck is that? Shelf brackets. That's done, that's done, that's done. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go back in here. Let's delete this. Uh, okay, so I want to go to Projects, Cabin in the Woods, FBX, and Shelf Bracket. Now, I don't know exactly how long that board is. Um, it would make, make a lot of sense if I made this the right size. Uh, so let's see what we can do about importing that. Import. Um, and it was called... Oh, I just left it as part of the hutch. Okay, let's go and check Unreal. Unreal is really good for giving you the dimensions of things. Uh, so if I go and double click on this, it'll actually tell me the dimensions up here. If I go put this on a dark enough thing that we can see it. Uh, so the approximate size of this is 93, 35, and 1. So there's my answer, 93. So if I go back to max here and do this from my... Uh, I need to rotate this 90 degrees. What the hell was that? It wasn't until after the program I found Tim and did a tutorial in Tover's class to learn how to be a better modeler. Now I'm working on... Oh, Christian, stop speed modeling. Speed modeling is what people do to show off. There's no there's no room in the industry for speed modeling. You want to get good enough at what it is that you do that you can do it quickly, but don't like you know, fifteen minutes, here's a full Gundam. There's no there's no place in the industry for that kind of modeler. You know, get good at what you're doing. Absolutely. Uh okay, so this is now let's reset the X form on this. X minus Okay, I'm going to export this now. Export selected over the shelf bracket again. Uh, OBJ, FBX. Okay, let's go see how hard it is to go make one of these shelves. So, I'm in the right folder. Shelf bracket. And then I'm going to go to my textures and materials. I'm going to bring this into the werewolf folder. Because...
uh, M I shelf bracket. We'll go and import. Well, there is there is totally a position for weapon modelers, right? You just got to get good at it. Where did my shelf bracket go? Okay, turn these on. Okay. Uh, my shelf bracket. I can go to my meshes. My shelf bracket. Okay. Double check that these look good in here. And they do. Uh, maybe I'll create a blueprint for this. The blueprint, this is going to be an actor. This is going to be called BP underscore shelf. I did too. Actually, it took me like fucking 30 years to realize that most of the good guys were animals. It wasn't until I started modeling them that I was like, hey, I have a folder full of animal names. Uh, obviously, not all of them are, but uh, but it was just funny. I never, as a kid, that never, never occurred to me. Okay, let's fuck off. What do I need to go up? Just a smidge. Okay. And there we go. Now I've got a blueprint for a wall shelf that I should be able to just go throw these in in a couple of places. I have an idea for this too. I realize that most of you guys are too young to know what mask is. Um, which is fine. I'm not making it for you guys. Um, the, the reason I'm choosing mask, that I'm choosing something of that generation, I'm not making it to impress students. I'm not making it to have students go, oh, wow. I'm making it because people of my generation who are typically now at art director or senior level or whatnot... Uh, they recognize it, and they're like, oh, man, that's so cool. Uh, and those are the people that I like to have uh, do that kind of thing. And it's the same thing with teachers, too, right? Um, Rich, I don't know if you know this or not. Um, shit. Oh, what's his name now? Uh, I totally forget his name. One of your teachers at Sheridan, one of the instructors there, um, is a giant Transformers fan. Um, and has tons of Transformers all over his desk and everything, um, which is cool, right? It's uh, it's one of those things. But again, like it's 
it's G1 Transformers, not something that a lot of people uh, really uh, are familiar with from your generation. I mean, most of what you guys know is Michael Bay, which that is frankly not Transformers. Uh, shit, what's his name? I'm totally, his name is escaping me. And so, yeah, so anyway, that's, that's why I'm choosing to do something of that nature, is that it's, uh, um, it's more indicative of the people my age than it is um, the people your age, you know. I don't need to impress you people. And the idea, too, I mean, while I say that, I don't need to impress you people. The idea, too, is that you guys would be impressed by the 3D and the, that kind of thing more than anything else. Okay, I think that's good. I like the number of shelves I've got here. And uh, now I'm just going to go put some shit on them. I think what I'm going to do... God damn it, what the hell happened there? We'll pretend these are full of detergents. <laughs> Even the one that's very clearly a gas can. Okay. That works. Oh, Michael Bay is not real Transformers. Bumblebee is called Bumblebee because he's a yellow bug, not a fucking $600,000 Camaro. Um, I'll find something to put on top of this shelf. And put a box up there. I don't even know why I put this up here. You can't see it. Okay. Yeah, I really dig that. I think those shelves were the smart thing to go. So in terms of cost, the only thing it cost me to get these shelves in here uh, was the brackets, which is 500 vertices, 600 triangles, so nothing. Um, and then uh, a board that's already in here and a 256 texture which is what's on these brackets, which, again, like, even 256 might be overkill on that. Uh, am I going to put a token on one of those shelves? I think I am. 
Um, the trick with the tokens... Totems, not tokens. Uh, the trick with the with these guys is that um, they uh, they have to be identifiable by the students, right? And so when you walk over to this one, I just had a uh, where am I? So yeah, over here. If I go walk over to this one, you have to be aware that there's something there and actually look up to it. Actually, there. So I can only target it if I look up to it like that. And so you actually have to know that that's something you can target and look at it. Um, all the ones that are at head level are a lot easier to find, as are the ones that are just below head level, like the coin here. Um, and that's because they just they naturally light up when you go near them. But anything that's up high, you actually like. There's another one over here, the uh, the ice cube tray. Actually, it hit, it lights up pretty fine on its own. Maybe the bull is too far back for it to light up. Oh, I gotta fix that fucking chair. Um, maybe I'll move it forward a little bit. Cause maybe the the trace is just not seeing it. I'll go put it on the edge. But yeah, the idea is that you want to make sure that they they are uh, f findable. I'm finding it. <laughs> I get lost in my own basement. I went back. I was showing my wife. What, there we go. Oh, I see it there. But yeah, you definitely have to look up when you're near it here. And so, yeah, it really depends on your starting position, I think, in terms of uh, in terms of that. So what was broken over here is the chair. So yeah, that is that is not something I can have happen. Uh, I'm going to bring another blocking volume in. And we'll scale this sucker down. Let's go make it so we can't stand on the chair. It's a lovely chair, but it's not a stool. And so I'm just going to put this in the right place. Make it a wee bit longer. Bring it over this way. Too much, much, too much is too much. Bring it down and scale it up. That should be better. I'm going to try and try it again. I'm at the far end. It's actually really starting to feel full to me now. Which is amazing going back and looking at some of the uh, the earlier live stream videos and how empty this room was when I first started. Uh, actually, when I first started, I had made a second room here. Um, just to the left of the stairs. There was like a hallway with another room. Oh, weird. You can still, you can still go up it a bit. So I'm definitely going to move that. That bullet is really hard to see. Uh, which means... I know what the fix for that is. I'm going to put a couple of candles over here. So just by having these candles behind you... It should provide enough light... When I grab the bull... If I can... If I can grab the bowl. Uh, it's not quite enough. There we go. So if I grab them from the right angle, it's actually the candles that light up this thing. Um, I'm toying around with giving the kid a flashlight. Um, I think it might be too much if I do that, but I, I'm playing around with the idea of that. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, digging it, digging it, digging it. Okay. Let's see what we can get going about having the character uh, look at. Um, look at the totems. Uh, as he walks by. Um, I 
So this was something that uh, one of our programmers did uh, on a game that I worked on uh, way, way back when, um, which was a um, um, a fighting game. And we made it so that when you walked around each other, when you kind of like sidestepped around each other, the characters always kind of turned and looked at each other, which was a really, really cool thing. Um, and now it's it's a lot easier to do that. Um, inside of the engine so i'm gonna i'm gonna go and kind of plug that in uh and get that up and running um that guitar that's my guitar one of my guitars where is it over here it's a seagull they're made in uh they're made in bc um i actually made a like a proper brand name guitar and put the you can't see it but there's a uh bring a light bulb in here. There you go. Uh there's a serial number inside the guitar that's actually legit. Um But yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful guitar. I had to fuck it up to put it in the basement <laughs> in order to make it look like it fit. And so I put all kinds of damage and wear on it to make it uh look a little bit more gungy and dirty because the one that I made is like brand new and pristine and oiled and <laughs> all that fun stuff. Um Okay. Um, so in order to do this, uh, I need to go into my character blueprint. Um, uh, actually it's not the character blueprint I need. It's the animation blueprint that I should be in. Um, so let's do this. Let's go to the, the character and let's go find the animation blueprint. There it is there. Let's go into the animation blueprint and it's the... Um, and this one, not this one, this one, default, there we go, that's the idle run, that's not what I want, update animation, no, anim graph, there it is. So this is what I want. So I'm going to back this guy up, um, which is going to give me the ability to... So what this is, uh, the state machine, which tells me the state that my character is currently in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put some procedural things kind of in between here um, that are going to then manipulate that pose. Um, and so the way that this works is that you can go in and manipulate things in a very clever way. So if I were to go and go in here and look, go grab a look at node. So we can get a look at node. And you can see this little person here. That's where you would like put this here and put this here. And now um, we can tell it to look at any one particular thing. Uh, we can also get a uh, transform node. Uh, transform... Uh, where are you? Maybe it's just transform rotation. Um, transform rotation. There should be a transform transform. Um, transform. Boom. There it is. So this one will allow us to move a bone, rotate a bone, and scale a bone. Now we did this in a uh, in a zombie game that I had worked on uh, ages and ages and ages and ages ago, um, and we made it so that when you shot a zombie in any one particular body part, um, that we set the scale of one of the bones to zero. Uh, right now, you can see the bone is set to none, um, but we set it to we set it to like you know. Um, shot bone as a variable and whenever you shot the, the zombies whatever bone was closest to the bullet mark uh, or the bullet wound or what have you um, that bone would get set to that variable that variable then would go into here as the bone and then we would shrink it to zero and the limb would actually disappear and then what we would do is we would spawn the inverse of that and ragdoll it um, so scale everything but that bone uh, or anything but that bone and beyond down the uh, the hierarchy. 
and you would end up with a second version of your character that was just the arm, if if that's what you shot off. And it would fall to the ground and kind of flippity-floppity. And so uh, it was a really, really neat way of uh, of making, you know, something pretty dynamic go. And so uh, this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to use the transform node. Let's go plug this in here and put this in here. And uh, we'll come back to look at here in a moment. Uh, we're going to use transform. And what I'm going to do with the transform is set the bone that I want. Um, now, the bone to modify here should be the kid's head. Uh, head, head. Um, uh, translation mode, add to existing. Uh, that's fine. Rotation mode. Add to existing, so that it, uh, whatever is already there, it'll just add to it. Uh, actually, translation mode, we can just hit ignore, because I'm not going to be translating. And scale, we can ignore, because I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be doing that either. Uh, now, somewhere in here was also a value for how many bones backwards down the chain it would work. Um, so, for instance, if right now this is set to the head... Um, if I go in, if I actually go and change these values here, I'll show you, let me compile this, but let me show you what happens when I add some rotation to this. Let's say 90 degrees in X and the kid looks down. So he's still idling, but I've rotated his head 90 degrees down. Uh, if I go to zero and let's use Z, if we go 80 degrees, we can have him look to one side. And if I go negative 80, you'll look on the other side. And if I add negative 15, he can look up. Or negative 25, you know, you can have him look up. Now, obviously, this is uh, not ideal here in, uh, in the way that this character is rigged already. But hopefully, um, when the other uh, rig gets completed, this will work a little bit better. I would like this to taper off down the, uh, the bones a little bit. Um, yeah, 90 degrees down. And it, don't forget that it's not just 90 degrees down, but it's 90 degrees down on just his head. His neck didn't move. And so that's why, that's why it looks as horrible as it does. Um, but the idea is that I'm going to get the rotation uh, I'm going to get the position of something in the world, and I'm going to have the kid then kind of look at that, um, which will be really, really good for um, changing that kind of uh, that rotation. And so uh, let's move these guys down. I'm going to put this in here, look at, doink and doink, uh, like so. Um... And the bone to modify will be the... Let's put this on the head as well. And what we should have here now... Look at target. Oh, yeah, this is this is not what I want. Uh, what this will do, I can have him do things like look at his arm or look at his shoulder. Um, compile this. There. <laughs> he's, he's looking at his own shoulder. Look at that. Holy shit. Uh, not what I want. We'll get that out of here. We don't want that node. Compile this again. Uh, the idea is to get the transform, the rotation uh, for an object into here. Um, so let's go set that up. And the way that I'm going to do that is, let's, <laughs> I don't need this, uh, is in here. So let's go find tick. I think it's down here. There's tick. No, nope, that's use. Weird. I don't have. Uh, I don't have anything in my headset right now. I'm not listening to anything. Um, and I just just heard a voice, uh, which is rather confusing because there's nothing in my headset right now. Freaking me to fuck out. Okay. Um. <laughs> So, um, where's tick? Here, let's just add tick. And what it'll do, because you can't add tick more than once, it'll zoom in and on. There it is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my... 
my event tick back here a little bit. Now you really want to be careful when you're making games um, to put as little on tick as possible. Um, that is absolutely something that'll destroy your game. Um, and you got to remember that that tick is in more than one place, right? Um, this is my character blueprint, and I've got a tick here. Uh, if I go into the level blueprint, um, there's a tick here. Right now, I don't. There's nothing in that tick, so that's fine. Um, but it is one of those things that you want to really be careful of because you can. You can really, really, really um, slow your game, your game down. So what tick is, is it's going to do something on every frame of the game, uh, which is really going to slow it down and really going to make it perform quickly. Um, and so... I'm going to do a calculation here that is going to look at all of my totems. Um... And it's going to find the one that is closest to me. Um, so that that's a really easy thing to do. Uh, all you have to do is first just get actor uh, of class, this one. And you need to know which kind of class, what objects you're going to be looking for. And this is easy because I have made my own class for this, which is a totem why is it oh it's bp underscore totem bp underscore totem hmm. oh they're not totems that's right they are uh this one they are bp pickup child master and so that's what i need i need bp underscore child Child. BP Pickup Child Master. Oh, it's Pickup Child Master, right? Pickup Child Master, not BP Child. Okay. So, what this is going to do is on every frame, it's going to find everything that is a pickup, in this case, my totems. And the next thing that I want to do is I just want to go through those things. So we're going to come out of here and we're going to go for each, each. Let's come out of here and go for each. So for each loop, and we're going to use everything that's in this. Yeah, yeah, make an array, that's fine. Um, and what it's going to do is... <coughs> this should really actually just be an array here. Anyway, I'll plug this in here. We'll make an array on the fly. Um, so now it's going to do for every single one of those things that's in that list. Um, we need to then find which one is the closest to me. So I have to move this. Let's move it up here because I need to add. Give myself a little distance in here. Let's just move that over. I have some room. So, everything that's in this array, we are going to get the distance to that object. And the idea is to uh, calculate that to find out um, which one of them there things is um, is the nearest. Um, so, uh, let's add a branch. I'm going to put this here. And the branch is just going to look for a true or false here in order to proceed. And so what I want to do is I want to pull out from here and add a uh, greater than float. And I'm going to do the same thing with a less than float. And this is going to go into an and so if both of these things are true then my branch is true and um uh, i need to then set a closest distance variable here and a minimum distance here uh and then what we're going to do is we're going to set a new variable coming out of true 
So let's, uh, can I promote this to a variable while I'm here? I can promote this to a variable. I'll put this over here. So true is going to go into here. Uh, this variable is just going to be called nearest totem. Like so. Um, that's going to do that. That's going to do that. Uh, I now have a variable called nearest totem. Uh, I don't need that. Uh, I need two variables for here. Um, this is then going to get set. So let's promote this. And this is going to be the closest distance, which will go here. Let's set this to closest distance, like so. And um, do 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 do. Where's my closest here? Closest distance, which I'll plug into this one. And then I need a minimum, let's compile this. Uh, I need a minimum distance here. Let's make a new variable here again. Uh, variable new, this will be a float, which I'll call min distance. Compile that. And this is something that I'm going to get to set myself to go in here. Uh, get the minimum distance and put it in here. Uh, and this is just going to be something that makes sure it's within range. So the closest object's distance and the minimum distance here, uh, as long as it falls between those two things, it'll return this as being true. Uh, and then it'll set that tone totem to be the nearest totem. Um, Uh, I don't need that. So this, if I'd done this inside of a, uh, I'm thinking I might put this inside of a function, and then I can just plug the function in here instead of doing all this out here. Um, might be a little bit easier to do this. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Let's go back to the leaf game. They're done, man. They're done. Game over, man. Game over. Um, so, yeah, let's do that. Let's grab all of this and copy it. And I'll make a new function. And we're going to call the function... Um, find... Uh, nearest... Totem. Okay. So I just copied this into the uh, into the function here. Uh, and we'll spit a return out here. And what I want to return in the output is a actor object actor uh, and this actor is nearest totem holy shit man nearest totem and then what I'll do is I'll get the nearest totem. So this is being set here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get the nearest totem. And we'll spit that out. So the way that this works is it's going to go through. Let's move these guys along a little bit here. So it's going to go through this. When this gets fired off, it's going to grab all those objects, make an array out of them, go through the list of the array, getting the distance of each of those things. Um... 
and then just trying to find which one is the closest one, setting it here, and then that gets set here, and then spits it out in the return node. So if I compile this, that should work, no problem. If I go to the event graph, I can actually kill all of this, because now it's a part of my function. And what I can do is I can just bring my function out here, and my function will now say, that's the nearest totem. So we can go and pull this a little bit closer here. Doink. Now, what I'm going to need to do is then get the, of the nearest totem, uh, get trans transformation, uh, actor transformation, and we're going to split this guy. Oink. So that's going to give me its location, rotation, and scale, uh, which is then what I need to pass into the kid, right? Um, let's compile this, make sure there's no errors. Okay, uh, let's now go into the kid. So that's what I need to pass into these things. Now, it's it's not exactly going to work in that way, um, because what happens here is this needs to be where that object is in the world. Um, and so we're going to need to change the way that this is being done a little bit. Um, I'm getting distracted by the leaf game. So it's a third period. Leaves are down by two goals with 15 minutes left, 13 minutes left. They're done. They're done. This is the end of their season. I has tear. I has tear. The only, uh, the only good side of this is that uh, the Leafs might qualify to get a first uh, draft, first round draft pick, first draft pick. And there's a really good kid coming up. And so that'd be badass. Um, Um, so I'm wondering if there isn't a better node to do this, um, that instead of getting the transformation of this thing, since I have an object here, uh, if I don't just pass this object to a, uh, a global variable, um, and then put a, a look at node here, uh, let's see, uh, look at function, uh, current transformation. Target position. So that would be good. Yeah, so if I go and uh, split this, I think this is actually what I want. If I grab this, and this, and this. Let's A, let's make sure this shit's not broken. Yeah, compile error. Oh, because it needs, it actually needs something. Um current transformation uh, can I get I don't think I can why did the game stop I stopped the game um, the current transformation should be where the body is already split this that, sh that should be okay uh, current value of zero, zero, zero of the position, target position. Split. Do this. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I'm getting warnings. Uh, uses potentially thread unsafe call. Look at function. Disable thread update or use thread safe call. Uh, that might be bad for performance if I do that. And I think it's because it's putting in a lot of these values here that doesn't need to be here. Uh, let's see what else we got in terms of look at. Find look at. Okay. No, it should be this. So I think what I need to do is then pass this to a local, uh, a global variable. Um, so the way that I've set up my global variables is I've put them in the levels themselves. 
uh, is in menu variable. Yeah, is in here. I think that's what I did. I don't have a blueprint, do I? <clears throat> oh, I might have put them in the persistent world. Let's go to maps and persistent and we'll save everything. And now that I'm in the persistent, let's go look at the level blueprint. No, there's still only a couple of variables here. Where the frig did I put my variables? Uh... BPLDA. Let's go open that. Open the blueprint editor. There's yeah, there's no variables in here. I did have them in a BP uh, level blueprint, but I moved them at some point. I don't remember where I moved them. I thought it was in the level blueprint. But my variables aren't here. Hmm. Um. Very interesting. Getting distracted by the game. There is a, uh, Let's transform no node. It's supposed to have a fall off on it. But is the number of bones down the uh, animation? Toronto penalty. Done. They're so done. Okay, uh, let me go and look at this online. Um, Okay, well, let's do first, let's double check that my nearest totem is actually the nearest totem. So I'm going to hit print. And let's just plug my nearest totem into this and ensure that this is actually returning uh, the object that is nearest to me. So I would say that is not actually working. Uh, where is this? This is in the character blueprint. Uh, very, con very con concerned. This should be Make sure all this is plugged in.
Oh, my minimum distance is zero. Uh, let's make sure that this is, I don't know, let's say 250 centimeters. Otherwise, there ain't nothing there. So it should only work hmm, if something is within 250. I'm definitely within 250 of these objects. Uh, let's make sure I've got that wired up together uh, in the right way. Uh, it is, yes. Less than, greater than. That's been compiled. Okay, uh, let's, oh, the, none of that's fucking running, that's why. A little simple thing, like not plugging in one node and it doesn't work. Okay, and I gotta fix that. I don't like that I can go up that. So why is that? It's still not returning. Whoa! Okay, okay. Uh, accessed none while trying to read this. Accessed none while trying to read this. So, I didn't find any actors. Uh, here. Not here, here. Find nearest actor. Uh, it always returned. Everything's plugged in, right? It always returned nothing. Uh, so I'm doing something incorrect here. Uh, so let's try and bypass the branch. And not bother checking distance. Let's just go and make sure that we can actually find... ...some actors. Okay, there's ten... Still 10, still 10. Hmm. Okay, so it's not actually updating. Yeah, that's... Oh, what am I doing wrong now? This needs to go in here. I do need to do the check. Delete that. Let's try that. Down to seven minutes left in the Leaf game. Now it's returning nothing again. Yeah, let's close the kid for a moment. Uh, 
Yeah, this is not doing what I wanted to do. Set up the right way. Hmm. Oh, leaves just scored on again. Five minutes left, but three nothing. I'm a, I'm a just, I'm gonna just turn that shit off. <laughs> I'm gonna put my music on. <sighs> I tell ya, that is, uh, that is something else. Does it does feel? Uh, a little bit more like life is returned to normal uh, in in a way where I'm disappointed by the Leafs. All is right in the universe again. Uh, okay, let's. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look this up online. I don't know why this is not working. Um. I don't know why this is not working. What? Get. Yeah. Get closest distance marker, get closest point. No, none of those is what I want. Kind of know what is that? Get closest actor to player. Why is that a node? Uh, stream contact sensitive on. Uh, get closest. I'm not typing. Get closest actor to player. So it's telling me that's an actual node. I don't, I don't think it is. I think that's a custom node somebody made because that is not something I've ever seen before. Um, you know, it's funny if I, I've actually had this up and running before. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, yeah, I know, I totally know how I'm going to make this work. Um, I'm in the kid, yeah? I'm in the kid. Oh, that's brilliant. 
Brilliant, I tell you. Okay. Got an idea. Uh, this is still not working. So, uh, that needs to be remedied. I still don't know why this is making an array and not just doing that. So this works fine. In the event graph, this should just be printing out the nearest totem. Now, it did work a little bit. I want the go till it bleeds. I don't know why this doesn't work. The logic is sound. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the other, the other map. So I don't have to keep doing the... Uh, I don't have to keep doing the level anymore. Yeah, see, it's returning none. It should not be happening. Mental note, I saved it with a broken... A broken script. <laughs> okay. Um, kid spawns. Kid's broken. It didn't return an error that time. But it didn't print the nearest totem either. That was in the music. There's, I heard a kid talking. Freak me out. Um, okay, what's going on? So here was, here's the brilliant idea that I have. Uh, in my character, Skeleton, I'm going to add a widget. Or not a widget, but a... Um, in here... Blueprints, this kid. No, not, not what I want. I want the character. And I want the character Skeleton. That one? That one will work. In the Skeleton. So what I'm going to do in the Skeleton... Let's get out of the Retarget Manager. I don't care about that. What I'm going to do with the skeleton is I'm going to add a point. So here's his head. This is the bone where his head is. And again, I'm going to get an updated version of his skeleton, so I'm going to have to do this again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a socket to his head. And the nice thing about a socket is that I can, I can move a socket. A socket is something that is completely movable. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the socket... Look at target like that. We'll save the kit. Now this will change nothing in terms of his animations. It'll change nothing in terms of uh, his rigging or how he's built. But what it means is I can then set up a uh, a look at, and that look at can be the um, that totem. So if I get the nearest object right here. What I can do is I can make the kid always look at that, um, always look at that node. I might have to put it in front of his head <laughs> and just notice that. Um, but what I can do is I can then actually have him uh, always look at that socket. And so um, if I do this correctly, which would be in here, so I've got to get I've got to get this working. Let's put this at the end here. I've got to get this working before anything else. So I don't know why this is not working. Everything else. Make an array. Get all the actors of a class. The class I'm getting is the pickup child master. <sighs> yeah, no, it should be the master. I'm going to make an array of everything in that list. Okay, we're going to go through the entire list and we're going to find that we're going to set the nearest one. And we're going to set what's called the closest distance. Get distance two. None of this is doing what I want it to do.
I don't know why this is not working. location none of that is looking this up online everything is either doing exactly what I'm doing or what I'm looking at won't work and it's crazy because I've actually had this I have already had this in my system working and I took it out because I was gonna do it a different way Hmm. Let me let me look this up in another way. And Alice in Chains tune just came on. That is something I haven't heard in forever. Okay, here we four. Uh, find nearest object. All right, let's do actor of class. Okay, let's see what this guy's doing. Okay, that's what I'm missing. Let's try this. I'm gonna move these guys over. Uh, 
Okay, um, so I gotta pull this out. Get actor location. And then we're gonna vector minus vector. And the answer to this is gonna go into a vector length which is going to give me something that I can promote to a variable which I'll set here okay uh, I'm just gonna call this distance for now Uh, and then I need the character position. Um, get player character. Uh, and then we're going to get location. And this will go in here. Okay, and then uh, that's branching vector length. So this distance. Okay. You guys can come down. Just leave it there. There's no errors. I think that's what I was missing. What is this I'm listening to? Oh. Huh. Stone Sour. I hadn't, I hadn't heard this one. I'd say this is not finding any totems. What the same hell is going on? This is not working. And it also didn't return any errors, which is also a little confusing. Let's go to my event graph. Make sure this is freaking plugged in. Uh, let's, let's check in. Is valid here? I don't know what's going on. Uh, so if it's valid print, if it's not, just fucking go past it. That's not going to return anything. Uh, let's print here as well. Okay, let's try that. Still nothing? Nothing, nothing. Uh, that has to go in there. <laughs> Invalid, so it's not actually finding anything. So it's always returning false. So that means that this is doing nothing. My brain hurts. Let's try this a different way.
Okay. Okay, let's fucking wipe this. And spit it out again. Okay, get all actors of class. That class BP underscore pickup child master. Oh, why is it now giving me an array? Mental. Mental! I don't know why. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to then get... Nope, not get actor array bounce. Just get. Get. This guy. And then we are going to promote this to a variable. I don't need to promote this to a variable. Let's undo that promoting. I already have a variable called nearest totem. And I want to set it. So we're going to set nearest totem. We're also going to underneath here get distance to target is this guy and we get player character and that's what it's comparing it to uh this we are going to promote i don't need to promote that undo i already have all my variables uh let's call this distance wink But I don't know if you know who I am. Well, I was there and I saw what you did. I saw it with my own two eyes. I know where you've been. It's all been a pack of lies. I can feel it. Coming in the air tonight. Okay, so there's my for each loop. Which again is going to return whatever I tell it to. Come on. Whatever I tell it to. Distance 2. I remember... I remember, don't worry. How could I ever forget? It's the worst time. I need distance. And we are going to compare these things. So let's do a comparator. This is going to be a branch. With this guy being the condition. And then we'll set this from here. For this moment, for all my life, O oh Lord. Like so. Compile, no errors. This is still returning nearest totem. Okay. Let's go back to the event graph. Jesus fucking Murphy. I don't, okay, let's fuck off. <laughs> I don't need all of this. Is valid, branch, print. Just fucking print. Alone, alone. Okay, it's twenty five, twenty three, twenty eight, 
29, 28, 34, 18. That guy's not 18. Whatever. 33, 30, 25. Okay, I'd say that's working. 26. Stupid fucking pain in my ass trying to get this going, man. So. <laughs> yes. What time is it? 10.44. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this one a little early tonight. Holy shit. Holy shit. The Leafs scored three goals in the last minute, and it's in overtime. And I, t I turned it off. Jesus Christ. Why the hell did I turn it off? Holy shit. My dad texted me to tell me. He's like, hey, are you still watching? I was like, no, I gave up on those losers. He's like, they scored three goals in one minute. Overtime is just starting now. What the hell? Uh, okay. So now that I know this is working, we're going to bypass this. Okay, save. Uh, get okay. Hmm. So I was hoping to be able to just reference a socket here directly. Um... There doesn't appear to be anything like that. Okay, uh, set world location. No, uh, add world offset. I don't move the mesh. That's not what I want. Um, let's see if let's see if this is even something you can do. Uh, UE four set socket location.
I'm just reading up to see whether or not this is even possible to do. Keep getting distracted by the hockey game. I can get the socket location, but I cannot set the socket location. Fucking play off hockey. So the reason I'm trying to do this with a socket is that you can you can have the player look at a socket, which is useful. But you don't seem to be able to do it. Okay, maybe I can't do it with a socket. So what if I just attach a dummy? Uh, are there dummies? No dummies. Uh, no, there's no nulls. Uh, see? So I'm going to rename scene to be look at target.
Okay. So what I want to do now, uh, get location. And then we are going to look at target. Uh, set location world okay Okay. Damn. Let's see. I'm not going to see anything if I do this. Let me add a dummy that I can see. Sure. Let's put a point light here. <laughs> uh, look at target. going to do this with a light and see if it's possible so it should be a light bouncing around from totem to totem which is absolutely the case okay so that's beautiful so i can i can move that around so all I'm going to do now is just get the kid to look at that. Which is going to be in here. Let's move this back. And move this back. I cannot believe this game. I cannot believe I turned this freaking game off. Um, I'm trying to get the, the kid to always look at the totems. I've got... Um, I've now got the ability to find the nearest totem to the kid. And so what I want to do is now just manipulate his skeleton uh, to always go and look at where this thing is. So I've got a look at target here now. Uh, and the trick is to now manipulate. Uh, don't think I can do that. So that has to happen in here. That's where I am. No, it needs to happen in the animation blueprint, which is here. N new new blueprint. Okay, we can delete the new blueprint. And I think each of the individual meshes of the kid can be deleted as well. These are just going to bloat my file size up. The kid's been imported as an FBX, so I don't actually need these components. That was just to build the materials. So this one, this one... Uh, this one, this one, this one. I think actually this one too. Get rid of all those. That's the animation blueprint. Uh, get. Get player character. Uh.
Uh, a player character? That should be it. Should be. Look at target. So I need to get, uh, get component by class. Uh, what class of object was that? What was I using? Scene. Is scene in here? Scene component. Uh, get, sure, get a copy. Get or location. Let's split this. Oh no, that's just location. I need get transformation. Get transform. Get socket transform? No, I just need get world. Transform, and we'll split this. Trans, rote, scale. Okay. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, so it actually says this might work. <laughs> Indeed it does. So that looks a little painful. It's not doing what I think it's doing. So I don't think that's going to work. Okay, so maybe I do have to do it with a socket. Oi, man, seven minutes left in overtime. This is killing me. You don't, you don't like the broken neck? No, so I've got, I've already got a, a function here that finds the totem that's closest to the kid. Um, and I can actually get where that object is. And uh, and what I was doing here was actually setting the location uh, of a dummy node that I've got here. And so the goal was actually to have the kid look at that dummy node, um, which is not not working the way I wanted to. Um, the look at let me see what else we got in here. Look at. Bone to modify is the head. Look at axis. Linear interpolation. Uh, look at target. Yeah, it has to be something in the skeleton, which seems foolish to me. I can do look at target, but then I can't move that look at target. Hmm.
Yeah, I don't I don't need a vision cone, right? Um it's already it's already there. I just need to snap the object to it. The the look at node itself actually has a limiter. So I can just set the number of degrees and it won't go beyond that. So I can do something like 75 degrees and his head won't turn past 75. And so it's a, that's a really easy way of doing it. Now, let me see one other look at function. That's the one that it didn't like. I don't want to do that. Hmm. Yeah, it does it does everything that I need it to do. I don't need to do a cone or anything like that. It's all it's all built in. The issue is the the only thing you can look at are members of your rig. Holy shit, the leaf's one. Holy shit, they came back and won. I'm blown away. Unbelievable. Holy shit. Uh, okay. So it doesn't look like I can move. Holy shit, they won. That is unbefucking leavable. Well, they're not. They're they're still not out of the. They're still not out of the fire yet. Okay, so I'm gonna put the word "node" on this one because it's a node, uh, and the skeleton of the kid has the look at target socket just so that these things are separate to me now again what i why is this middle finger down there i guess it didn't wring his hands whatever my dad won't stop texting me now Okay. Uh Can I set a bone location? This is the only thing that I can think of. Um if I go in here and event graph um can I get Let's get my character mesh set bone location. No, that's not going to work at all, is it? Set bone location by name. That's fine. So I can specify a bone name. It 
So it's not going to be this guy. It's going to be this guy. So that's what I need to do is update the skeleton with another bone. Yash, are you here? Are you watching right now? Oh, I didn't put a bone name. Uh, posable mesh component. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, get player controller. That's not going to work. Uh, get get bone location by name. Uh, set bone. Location. You cannot set a bone location. And okay, let's move this off. That's what I need to do. I need a dummy object that is part of the skeleton that can be moved and made to be the look at node. And then my look at, which I can then just set that bone to be whatever this is. So I can even use one of those finger bones uh, that doesn't work. Um, and the idea here, if I go and plug this in, and plug this in, boink, um, and recompile this, boink, so he'll look at whatever bone that is. And so if I then go move that bone to where I want it to be, make sure it's a child of the root so that it doesn't move along with him. Uh, and then I should be able to yeah, be able to look at it as with a clamp. Don't need to expose it. I can do that. Interpolation time. I can choose how long it takes to look at it, and I'll do it over one second. Now there should be... Wait, we can expose that? Okay, let's not, let's not do that. Uh, there should be a fall off. Alpha scale and range and preview. That's not what I want. There's nothing else here. Okay, you know what? I'm done farting around with this for tonight. I'm going to go and, uh, and have a beer, I think. Um, and so, yeah, uh, thanks for hanging out guys. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be back on Tuesday. Um, so it's Friday tonight, obviously, um, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to be doing a bunch of family stuff, probably get some more work on my studio done. And, um, Monday's my kid's birthday, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to live stream my kid's birthday. Um, and so I will be, uh, next here on, uh, on Tuesday evening. And so I look forward to seeing you then. And, uh, and until then, have a good night and, uh, yeah, let's do this again sometime.